Welcome to the Types of Equations video. By the end of this video, you should be able to interpret and generate each of the following types of equations, molecular equations, complete ionic equations, and net ionic equations, and you should understand the appropriate context for using each type of equation. Let's just remind ourselves about a few important things about equations in general before we proceed. Equations are written with reactants on the left and products on the right. So here we would say that these reactants yield these products. Recall that um, chemical equations show conservation of mass. There's one carbon atom on the reactants and one in the products, four hydrogens in the reactants and four hydrogens in the products, and four oxygens in the reactants and four oxygens in the products. No matter is being created or destroyed. We balance the equation using coefficients in order to maintain that conservation of mass. So this reaction is telling us that one mole of CH4 plus two moles of oxygen gas will yield one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. It's also important to note that because this is a chemical process, bonds have been broken and formed. You see that the bonds in the reactant molecules have been broken and new bonds in the products have formed. So even though mass is conserved, the atoms are rearranged from reactants to products. Now let's look at molecular equations. These are the types of equations you've been looking at all along. In this case, we represent all species involved in the reaction and the species are represented with their compound formulas regardless of their phases. This will mean more to you when we look at um, the alternatives. But again, we're showing conservation of mass and rearrangement of atoms, and we've used coefficients to balance the equation. A complete ionic equation is really helpful when we have species in aqueous solution. A complete ionic equation is particularly helpful if we're dealing with aqueous solutions. Let's consider this molecular equation we looked at previously. Notice that several of these substances are aqueous. And we also know, based on our solubility rules, that these three substances will dis dissociate completely when put in water. So, in reality, when we say Na2CO3 aqueous, we're really what we really have here is two sodium ions and a carbonate ion. Likewise, CaCl2 is actually a calcium ion and two chloride ions. In the products, Two NaCl's are actually two Na pluses and two Cl minuses. Now, because our calcium carbonate is a solid, it does not dissociate. Therefore, we do not break it up into its constituent ions. So in order to write our complete ionic equation, we still want to represent all species. However, now we're going to represent the ones that have completely dissociated as individual ions. The resulting complete ionic equation is shown below. Notice I've just taken the things that are aqueous and dissociated them into their constituent ions. I've maintained the balancing or the conservation of mass by using my subscripts appropriately as coefficients and by maintaining the coefficient in the, in the products. Notice I've said completely here. This, is a, this will be important later. If a substance doesn't completely dissociate, we do not write it as its constituent ions. Finally, let's consider a net ionic equation. Going back to our equation before, I'm going to turn this into a complete ionic equation. So we've got two sodium ions, a carbonate ion, plus a calcium ion, and two chloride ions. That's going to yield two sodium ions and two chloride ions and our solid calcium carbonate. For a net ionic equation, we actually want to only represent the species undergoing a chemical change. Therefore, we're going to eliminate spectator ions. A spectator ion is any ion that appears in exactly the same way on both sides. So for instance, I have two sodiums in the reactants and two sodiums in the products. That means nothing happened to those sodiums. They were there in the beginning and they're still there unchanged at the end. Likewise for the chlorides. Two chloride ions here, two chloride ions here. Oops, that guy's missing a charge. Um, so I'm going to eliminate those two. What's left then is our net ionic equation. Notice that we have the two ions that combine to form our solid product. A couple of
couple of notes about net ionic equations. First, it's really helpful to use them as often as possible. Being able to identify and ignore spectator ions is a really helpful skill. Spectator ions um, don't participate in the reaction, so anytime we can eliminate them from our thinking and from our representations, the easier it'll be to solve problems. In a net ionic equation, the product does not need to be a solid. This is a common misconception. For instance, consider the acid-base reaction represented here. If I turn this into a net ionic equation, by first turning it into a complete ionic equation, so sodium plus hydroxide plus hydrogen plus chloride yields water, which we do not dissociate because it's not something that dissociates completely, plus NaCl. Now I'm going to eliminate my spectators, Na plus and Cl minus. I'll be left with OH minus plus H plus yields H2O. This is an example of a net ionic equation where the product is not a solid, it's actually a liquid. Additionally, not all aqueous solutions dissociate completely. Here's another example. Here we have acetic acid plus sodium hydroxide yielding sodium acetate and water. As we'll see later, this is not something you would be expected to know now, acetic acid actually does not dissociate completely in water. Therefore, when we write our complete ionic equation, we keep it intact. We still dissociate our sodium hydroxide because that does dissociate completely. It's a strong electrolyte. Likewise, for our sodium acetate, and our water remains intact because it's a liquid. Therefore, when we cancel um, spectators in this case, the only thing that cancels is sodium. And what we're left with then is the acetic acid plus the hydroxide ion yielding the acetate ion, which I again forgot to put a charge on, and water. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at how to interpret and generate molecular, complete ionic, and net ionic equations, and then we considered how and when to use each type of equation.